Hey friends, welcome back to Dig It With Raven. I have a surprise for you today. I will not be the one that is going to rant at you for eight to 10 minutes. I actually got a friend to do that for me this week. His name is David Ian Howe. His main channel is Ethno Sinology. There he is here, just you know, gotta rep the peeps. So David is an anthropologist and he studies dogs. He does dog domestication. He does hunter-gather relationships with dogs, everything like that. And in between, he's absolutely amazing. And so I figured the best way for us to collaborate would be for him to talk about dogs, but in a, in a raven way. So we decided that he was gonna talk about Anubis, the ancient Egyptian god of Anubis, and he's gonna go into all of the ecology behind it. You're gonna get some dog history. You're gonna get some genetics. You're gonna get some Egyptian religion. Like you're gonna get it all. And he's a master with the green screen. So hang on to your hats, guys. It's gonna be a wild ride. Take it away, David. Hey guys, my name's David. I'm a friend of Ravens. I'm gonna do a video for her today. Uh, so you guys get to deal with me for another eight minutes. Um, yeah, so this video is gonna be about three different things. One, Anubis. Two, Egypt. Three, Christmas. Two of those things are relevant. Oh, I suddenly don't feel well. I'm gonna... Wait, hold on, where am I? H Hello? Hello? Strider? No, mortal. I am Anubis, god of death, mummification, and guardian of souls on their journey to the afterlife. Anubis? Yes, that is what I said. Wait, where the hell am I? You have died, and I am going to see if you are worthy of entering the realm of Duat. The hell's Duat? The Egyptian underworld, the afterlife. I will ask the questions, mortals. Do stop talking. Okay, so it, the afterlife is ancient Egypt's afterlife. It's, it's just Egypt. Egypt's afterlife. Color me surprised. All right, scale of one to ten. How screwed am I? Oh, you are quite screwed, sir. Six out of ten if you'd like to know the exact number, but we will find out when we put your heart on the scale. Oh. The weighing of the heart. I've heard of this. What do I need to do? Do I have to cut it out myself, or do you just take it out? like an Aztec priest or like how- So I will use my teeth to rip it out of your chest. Got it, okay, um. Present your heart to me, mortal. This one? Yes, that heart. Whoa! Now let's put your heart upon the scale and test it against the feather of Matt and see if you are worthy of meeting with Osiris and Ra. <sighs> Wait a minute. Are you a wolf, or are you a dog, or a jackal, or a fox? Like, make up your mind. Okay, so sorry you had to see all that, but here's, what's, here's what we're gonna talk about today. What is Anubis? Is he, is he a wolf? Is he a jackal? Is he a dog? Actually, I, I'm able to answer that for us today. If you've recognized who I am, you might not, you may have, I don't know, I don't care. Ethnosynology is my Instagram name, and that's the study of dogs in human cultural contexts. I specifically study the relationship between humans and dogs in the past. And my, my major focus is hunter-gatherers, but I can talk a little bit about Egypt because it is kind of relevant to what I like and what I study. First off, Anubis is just the Greek translation of his name. That's what the Greeks started calling him when they occupied Egypt. But his actual name is Inpu or Anpu, which means to decay. It's probably the closest word that we know of that's what his name would mean. And to decay, like death, is what Anubis is, the god of death. And, and not necessarily the god of death, but he helps souls go from the living world to the world of the dead. And that's kind of the god of death in a way. He's one of the oldest gods in Egyptian culture, and like he's worshipped for a long time. He was worshipped long before Osiris and, and Ra. Anubis is ever there as our friend. Anubis is there to help guide souls from the living world to the dead. He's not evil, he's not wicked, and he has no ill will towards humans. He's loyal to the gods, but he's also loyal to mortal humans. And that's interesting because he's a dog in a way. And we see our dogs as friends, but people in the past didn't necessarily see dogs the same way, but there is a cross-cultural pattern of dogs having to do with death. Think about it, Fenrir, right? Swallows the sun during Ragnarok. 
pretty, pretty deadly. Uh, in Aztec mythology, when you die and you go to the nine lands of the dead, you have to cross this river and your dogs that have died before you wait for you on that riverbank. And then they want to help ferry you across the river and guide you through the nine lands of the dead so you don't do it alone. Sholach is the god of fire and lightning, but he also has a lot to do with death. And specifically to do with death, he also helps guide souls to the afterlife. Very interesting. Uh, another dog that we might know of from an afterlife story like this is Cerberus, right? He's the right-hand man of Hades, or sometimes he guards the river Styx and he, he vets the wicked and the, the, the just from getting in there. It depends on the translation of the story, but it's always something to do with the afterlife. Now, I, I'm going on a little tangent here, but why, why is that the case? Why do the Egyptians and the Aztecs and, and many other cultures, especially indigenous American cultures, attribute dogs with something to do with death? Well, let's look at the facts. In Egypt, there's wolves and jackals and foxes, but it, it's debated, what, what is he? Now, jackals are definitely common. The golden jackal lives in, in North Africa. And the interesting thing here is jackals are often seen at night scavenging tombs or scavenging cemeteries. They're associated with that. Now, firstly, if they're desecrating tombs and the dead, you'd think that was a bad thing. In regards to life and death, Egyptians usually try to make things seem more positive. So that when they saw jackals associating with dead bodies and tombs and, and burials, they associated jackals as protecting those tombs and, and guiding souls. And that's where Anubis kind of comes from. You can't tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Now, black is not a color of jackals in Africa. It's just not. It would be actually really bad and they'd overheat because of how hot it is there. But the, the main thing is that black and his name being Inpu or Anpu to decay is it has to do with death. It's a, it's a death color. And also in Egyptian mythology, black is also the color of life because the Nile, when it's fertile, creates black fertile soil and that gives life. So it's this weird cyclical thing. Dogs are there for you. To make this a little more confusing, recent genetic evidence has shown that the African golden jackal is actually the African golden wolf. And that's confusing because those things all end up in the genus Canis. And then let's, let's step aside. Dogs are in the genus Canis, which is means dog in Latin, right? But then we have lupus. Canis lupus is the gray wolf, and then there's Canis lupus familiaris is the dog. Now, there's different variations of wolves all over the world, and they have different subspecies names in there, like timber wolves, red wolves, gray wolves, all those things, but there's also coyotes and jackals. You know, Canis latrans is the coyote. Canis anthus is the jackal. Whether it's a wolf or a jackal, it does it, it's just a word we attribute to it, right? But the point is those animals were scavenging tombs and they do the same thing. That's where the Egyptian idea of Anubis comes from, or likely does, we can't say for sure, but they did like their animals and they paid attention to animal behavior. So that makes a lot of sense to me. An article by Evans 2008 called The Anubis Animal, A Behavioral Solution? Evans posits that possibly that Anubis is just an amalgamation of all of the canid creatures that the Egyptians knew of. So wolves, jackals, and foxes combined and domestic dogs. That would make a lot more sense, right? They have something to do. There's the loyalty aspect of dogs. There's the scavenging aspect of jackals. And then there's the noble aspect of wolves. That, just all kind of goes hand in hand. And if you look at like statues of Anubis, it's really hard to tell what he is. He's way too slender for a wild animal, but he's also not domestic because there are paintings of domestic dogs in, in Egypt and they're specifically made to look not like Anubis. So it's, it's interesting. And lastly, let's move on to burials and mummification and funeral rites. In, in a story, Osiris's body gets messed up. I think Seth is the one who does it, cuts his body up into different pieces, and Isis is trying to put him back together. And in the process, Anubis helps Isis bind Osiris's body into mummified parts. Anubis was the first to mummify somebody, and it's to preserve their body so that they can make it to the afterlife better. That's a whole other story. It gets kind of weird. It has to do with a penis at some point, but it's an interesting topic. And, and lastly, there's lots of burials uh, in Egypt with humans and dogs together. Obviously cats are all over the place too, cat burials, but humans and dogs. And then there's a, a huge mass grave of dogs found in Egypt, which are pretty interesting too. And they are clearly offerings to the god Anubis as evidenced by objects around the site. And it's pretty cool. And that's it guys. Thank you, Raven. Thank you for having me on here. If you guys want to follow me, my YouTube channel is David Ian Howe. We'll put that link down here in the description. My Instagram is at Ethnosynology. You probably have seen me on there already though, if you know Raven. And 
Yeah, you can follow our podcast, Alive in Ruins podcast. We do have an episode with Raven, but we interview young archaeologists in the field and interview them about their research and their interests and, you know, why they've chosen to live a life in ruins. It's pretty fun. Merry Christmas. Uh, hey, it came back to being relevant, so. Silence, fool. You've done enough talking for one life. Do not need to repeat the same mistakes in the next. Now back to the scales. Oh. For the record, I identify as a jackal, so thank you for explaining that, but you could have just asked. And secondly, you have passed the test. Now, you must confess your sins. Oh, dude. <laughs> I've done a lot of stupid I killed a bug once. You know I need better stuff than that. Yeah, I, know. I, th I, thought, I thought maybe that was what you're looking for. Um, I one time convinced my entire 8th grade class that I spoke Japanese. What? How in the world would you manage something like that? I learned a whole bunch of Japanese words and I pretended to speak Japanese to my dad on the phone. It was actually pretty convincing. I don't even know where to begin to unpack the psychological issues in which you have, but All right. uh, continue. These are along the lines of the things which I would like to know. Ripped a mattress tag off my mattress when it said that is illegal. Pathetic. I mean, I have some envy. 2020's made me a bit of a glutton. I didn't call my mother on Mother's Day this year. I mail-in voted. Uh, one time a date was going so bad that I pretended to fall asleep on the couch so that she would get upset and then I could leave. No, that's just depressing. Yeah. All right, mortal. You have passed your tests. Now let's continue on. So we get to go meet Osiris, right? Is this gonna be a party or is this kind of just like a I got a farm for eternity kind of thing? Oh yeah, you'll be farming for eternity with your dog and whatever treasures and clothing you bring with you. But you will be farming. Alright, um... Did I mention I murdered? <laughs>